Welcome everyone. I'm really happy to have you here for this very special session with our guest today, Sherry Dillard. Sherry is an internationally renowned psychic, medical intuitive, medium, and the best-selling author of 11 books, including Discover Your Psychic Type and I'm Still With You. She has been a professional psychic and medium for over 35 years and offers courses on psychic and medium development. Sherry, thank you so much for being here. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about this session we're going to have. Likewise. So, you know, one of my favorite places to start in these sessions, and especially with you because of your background, is really differentiating between sensitive, empathic, intuitive. You know, sometimes we use those words interchangeably, but I'm curious from your perspective if there's a difference in quality but when you when you use those words, if there's a difference in the way that you're um, interpreting the experience of the person on the other side of it. Thank you for the question. You know, I one of the reasons the question is, I guess, important to me is that um, most of the books I've written, I focus on what is intuition. Now, I will talk about empathic um, awareness also and high, high sensitivity, but to kind of um, impact it more in one word, intuitive seems like a broader way to describe many of the extrasensory awareness beyond the five senses even. So, you know, in, intuitives span a broad spectrum of all kinds of modalities, seeing, feeling, um, thoughts, all kinds of uh, sensing. When we talk about empathic, um, we usually think of absorbing energy absorbing the energy of our environment or of others. And when we think of high sensitivity, um, it's usually not always, but there's a, that it's different in the way it seems to be. There's more of a focus at times with the five senses of oversensitivity. However, my feeling is that highly sensitive people some of the energy they're receiving is also coming from, we'll call it extrasensory awareness. It's, it's similar to an empath. However, high sensitivity, I've found in some people, the difference with, we'll say, intuition is that it absorbs more directly into the physical body as sensation. It doesn't necessarily come in as a thought or a feeling. I mean, it can, but it's the way we're oriented sometimes and the way we absorb energy information. So my feeling is though, even though highly sensitive people don't necessarily identify as intuitive, I feel it's a, a little different way they're absorbing energy. And that's why sometimes the energy can be so intense and overwhelming um, because it is coming in from stronger sources than we'll say external lighting or sense or things like that. And the same with empaths. I mean, empath is kind of an exclamation point on, I'm receiving a lot of emotional energy here. However, in our conversation, if I say intuitive or empathic or highly sensitive, I'm referring to probably all of them unless I say differently. Really nice. Thank you for that very um, clear explanation. As somebody who identifies as being highly sensitive and empathic and intuitive, um, I'm 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 really resonating with this clarity that you offered, and um, it makes sense to me. There are absolutely experiences where it's my sensory um, perception that feels really heightened and overstimulated, but as an empath, and, and that's certainly what I would say is that the high, highly sensitive piece of me. But as an empath. There are absolutely times where I just feel walloped. It's almost like um, in, in if you've ever seen in a movie where somebody walks through a waterfall and now they're on the other side, it almost feels like that for me in terms of taking on other people's energy or being aware of somebody else's energy or experience or in a space. And so I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, um, because I, I could be wrong, but I think a lot of empaths feel like they don't have a lot of choice in absorbing the feelings and emotions and energy of others. So I'm, I'm curious 
what your take is on that. Like, do we have a choice? Are we just sort of, um, as empaths, like we're just these open channels. And so we're just kind of walking through those waterfall experiences all the time and, and soaking it up from other people. What, what's your take on that? Um, you know, my feeling after, and this has come to me, you know, I've been doing this work for so, so long. This wasn't an instant awareness I had when I first got into the work. It's taken me, this is one of the longer, like aha moments, like a year long aha moment where I finally kind of feel like, okay, I think I'm getting it now in that way. Um, to a certain extent, I actually do feel we can have some control over it. Yes. Um, and that's what, you know, has motivated me more to, to really probe deeper into this is it, <sighs> And, and again, it's not 100% because as sensitive people, especially if you're oriented to absorbed emotional energy, there is always going to be a susceptibility to it. So let me say it a different way. I believe very strongly that we may not always be able to stop our sensitivity to emotional energy. However, I do feel to a, to a large extent we do have the choice of what level of emotional energy we are able and wanting to receive. In other words, we don't always have to be picking up the negative vibes in a room. We can actually work with our spirit, our spirit, our heart, our energy field to attract and absorb higher vibrations. And, and, and when we absorb the higher vibrations, it's incredibly beneficial to us. And my feeling is that that's the way it's meant to be. I don't feel that we have this empathic innate ability because we're here to absorb all of this negativity and suffer. I actually feel empathic ability, intuitive ability, high sensitivity is a more evolved way of living that we're meant to be involved, involved, evolving into and we're all evolving into. And we're obviously not on the of all same vibration with this. However, I do believe very strongly that these abilities and gifts are meant to be absorbing high vibration, positive, abundant energy. I love that. I love your reframe of why it is that we have these abilities. So I want to make sure that I'm really hearing you clearly. So really what you're saying is that this um, high sensitivity, these empathic and intuitive abilities are actually a source of power if we are in tune with, it's almost like if we're deliberate in what it is that we're looking for. It's like we're a receiver. And if we are conscious of what we're asking to receive, now we're really in a powerful position. Exactly, exactly. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that always, always I was never comfortable with when it came to empathic awareness and high sensitivity. Intuitive, not as much. You know, I, I find it more with when we identify as empathic and highly sensitive is the, the sense of powerlessness, the sense that I have to do things like avoid people, avoid places, um, basically live this minimal life because I, it's too overwhelming for me. Now I understand that I it was like that for many years of my life. So it's not, I see people doing this and I don't get it. I completely get it. I mean, I completely have been like, you know, people call, you know, res restricted diets. I'm on, I've, I've been on this like restricted energy diet, you know, and then like I said, if I, I become more and more aware of the ways that we can shift our vibration, because when we shift our vibration, we shift and we, like you said, have that power then to choose the energy that we absorb and we connect with. 
you know, one of the very, very common parts of being intuitive, empathic, and I don't know if it's, it's strong with highly sensitive people, but it's this sense of protection. It's the sense of how do I protect myself? And I, again, I completely get it. I'm not discouraging those who feel that way at all. I understand. However, what I've shifted to is instead of saying protect myself from energy, my empowered way of saying it would be to have boundaries, have boundaries with energy, just like we do with people. You know, we're not going to open our doors of our house all day and just let anybody walk in. You know, because if we do that, we're likely to get people that are not there for good reasons. And it's the same with our energy field is we make boundaries about who and what ever energy we want to choose to connect with. And I feel like the more we understand that the empower, how empowered we are as spirit, you know, we're spirit, then it starts to make more sense that there's a part of us that, that can do this and knows how to do this. So my, my next question, and I hope this translates from my head to you, um, when you're talking about protection, because of your background as a, a psychic and a medium, I'm curious, do we have to protect ourselves from like darker energies? Do darker energies exist? Um, you know, sometimes I think people that are really sensitive to energy are perceiving things that feel like they're intrusive or aggressive and unfriendly. And I'm I'm curious with your professional experience and background, do we just set energetic boundaries with those energies? Do we just raise our vibration so that we're not a match to those energies? How does all of that work? I, I think it's a little of both of what you just said. I, I do feel we need to raise our vibration and we do need to set boundaries. And I always do that. I always do that. I always set an intent before I do any work. And I'm not I, I'm not a believer in walking around all, you know, 24 seven open, intuitively open. I, 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 and I, I work with, you know, my students with this too, is that there are times during the day when we have to set aside to open and listen, um, you know, and, and feel what's happening here. You know, what, what's, what, is there a message I need or um, just to see what comes in. However, I feel like that's part of the empowerment too, is to choose and to say, I am, and I need to, it's a function of me. I need to respect and care for at the same time is to set a boundary when we do that. And also to, um, I guess, to be able to love ourselves in that way that, um, we're able to lift our vibration through love and also through releasing any of our repressed, absorbed, emotional energy, unhealed wounds that we've stuffed away. Because my feeling is that we inadvertently, uh, you know, the law of attraction is at work here. And inadvertently, what we do is we attract the unconscious energy that we're not aware of. You know, Freud, um, you know, great psychiatrists, uh, sociologists, all therapists, all of them, whenever you go to any kind of therapy, that's one of the things we do is we release we the memories, the stuff, because we know that trauma within us, anger within us that's not been expressed, uh, whatever that might be, grief is going to attract that in our situation. And it's going to not allow us to be happy and light. It's the same with energy. That's not just, it's a, it is energy. It's energy. And we, you know, in our childhoods, especially sensitive children, there's no place for, I don't know why I'm feeling these feelings. And so we stuff them away. We learn to stuff them away, stuff them away. Don't feel them. 
And we forget about them. We think, we think, well, they're gone. Well, they're not gone. What they're doing is they're attracting energy, physical, but also they're attracting energy from the environment, from other people. So one of the things to raise our vibration is really about that. It's it, a lot of it is really learning how to, you know, do the work of releasing what's within us that we we're not even aware of. And then it's, you know, we're always going to feel feelings. It's not about not feeling anger. It's not about not feeling grief. We have to feel them at the same time as we feel them, they release. So it's about feeling, releasing that raises our vibration loving ourselves raises our vibration and so it's not so much that we have to get into a worry state and a fear state it's more proactive state of how do i heal how do i get to be the strongest most clear being i can be because that's what truly more than anything we we attract from what seems like randomness the truth is we don't really attract random energy we really don't. You know, here's an example. You walk in a room, there's a lot of people in the rooms. Probably, let's say you don't even know most of the people. You don't know them. It's a new meeting, a party or something. And you notice that you feel a connection with a certain person and you feel like you're absorbing their energy. You feel like you can feel their energy and you keep kind of looking at them. You don't want to, but you keep getting drawn to that person. Why that person? Why that person? You know what I mean? Like, why are you energetically drawn towards that person? One of the things we can do is we can know what we need to release based on the emotion we're attracting in others and absorbing. If we're absorbing a lot of feelings, we'll say, of negativity. Oh, that person's so negative. I just, it's so negative. I can just feel that negativity. Maybe we have to look and say, do I have something within me that maybe I'm not even aware of that's attracting negativity? You know, do I feel in some way or maybe in the past feelings of that's never going to work or why am I trying or, you know, poor me, whatever it might be. And so I like to look at it proactively and say, it's not so much about trying to get away from a certain person. Now, I believe in boundaries, though. I don't believe we should stay in a toxic environment at all. But I'm saying at the same time, see what inside of you is attracting that and do what, you know, and, and work to heal that. Okay, so I'm thinking about a particular experience in my life, situation in my life, where there are some people who... I can't get away with, I get, get away from, and I've set healthy boundaries with as best as I can. And there's still this, this unwanted experience that I'm picking up. And, and let's say that I've done a lot of my own self-work, which I have, mm -hmm. is there, is it um, almost as simple as sort of shifting the inner self-talk, the inner monologue, how I'm thinking about what's going on with them? Like, how can we go from this present moment forward without digging up all of the repressed old stuff that maybe we we thought we've dealt with or um you know maybe even for example you're um like at the the store the grocery store or something like that and and somebody is like not kind in that moment is it is would you encourage people to sort of just shift their inner monologue shift their inner experience in that moment to try and change their energy is that sort of like a, a quick fix tool that we can keep in our pocket as sensitive empathic people as we're moving through the world yeah that's a good question um i don't know if you were actually talking about yourself i hope so because i want to ask you a question about that yeah when, when you said that you keep I'm just paraphrasing here, bumping into the, what, what, are you talking about, is there a pattern in that? Is there the same type of person or the same person? I'm in, in this particular uh, scenario that I was offering, it's the same person who is in my life, who I, I'm um, unable to get away from because of circumstances, who is a thorn in my side. 
And, you know, as you were talking about what is the energy in me that's attracting it, I was thinking to myself kind of the thoughts I think about them and the um, the way that I feel towards them and wondering where is that active in me, you know, is, yeah. what What's the feeling? The feeling is frustration, anger, powerlessness. Um, I don't want to probe too deep because, you know, I'm not sure what's going to come up, but I would say is if this person's close to you, emotionally close or a family or the connection like that, I would say not emotionally close, but family by law <laughs> connected through legality, not chosen family and not birth family. I would suggest, see, that's different than if we bump into an unkind person. You know, if we bump into an unkind person or we bump into someone that is clearly has their own thing going here, I would suggest what we do then is feel how that feels, feel how that unkind remark feels like yeah, that kind of hurt my feelings and I don't really like that. And I would choose not to have more of that. I would just say, don't repress it. Don't blame yourself. Just feel it and then you release it and you move on. And you say something like, I choose not to have more of that in my life. Um, but you don't over-identify or over-ruminate on it. Let that go. Sometimes we just need to let that go and not engage the energy. You know, just not engage it. That's different, though, in a way from what you're talking about, because we all have that. I have that, too. I have a particular person in my life. It sounds similar who I can't is part of my, you know. Yeah, bigger family, and it's kind of the same. There's frustration. There's some um, feelings of powerlessness with the relationship and um, it's not good. It's definitely not a good feeling. You know, I can tell you this though. I've learned so much about myself through that relationship. And one of the things that actually just in the past few days occurred to me about this relationship is that I have to forgive her because I realized if I forgive her, it's not going to stop the behavior. It's going to be there. Honestly, it'll probably get worse. It's getting worse. However, I realized because I've done enough forgiveness work that if I forgive her, I am no longer tied to that because what I'm tied to with her is how much she affects me and influences me. And that's what I get hooked into is that's what keeps me bound to her. And even though I don't want to forgive her, when I say to myself, how would it feel to forgive her? I get that sense of release and freedom. I'm sitting over here nodding as you're saying that because Sherry, what I'm interpreting from your words and the energy that I'm feeling from your words is that forgiveness is is almost like an energetic boundary with this relationship that I can't get away from. Like forgiveness is what unhooks me from being really tied into it. Forgiveness is what lets me have a little more energetic space. And it doesn't it doesn't um absolve them of behavior. It doesn't invalidate my truth or my experience. What it does is it allows me to raise my vibration rather than being held down by the exchange and the experience. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I could feel that so strong when that thought, when the, it's like probably my guides and angels were saying, you just need to forgive her. And I thought, oh my God, I mean, there should be no forgiveness, blah, blah, blah. I mean, truly, truly, truly. I mean, you know, if we were to look at it just in terms of a, a scorecard here, you know, at least from my perspective, um, but then it's not about that. It's not at all about that. It's really about that sense, exactly like you said, it's the only way to lift out of the vibration and out of this tension here, because that frustration is tight. You know, it's kind of what we were talking about with the repression. 
the repression is we're not aware, but when we're, and again, I, there's, I feel it too. I get it. I I'm there in a pretty strong way too, is that that's, that is such a hook is our own frustrations with somebody. And that's the only, maybe there's another way, but that's the way I, I guess I'm going to, I'm choosing to practice now. I love that. As you were just saying that, what came to me also very clearly, what feels really clear in this moment, because I'm not engaging with that person, right? Is, um, a lack of forgiveness is a type of repression of my own emotions and energy. It's like, it's almost like a more conscious repression. It's not like those old memories that I'm not even aware that I'm repressing. It's like holding on to the truth of their behavior and the, the refusal to forgive them on like a soul level. And to see this as like a part of my earth school curriculum and an opportunity for my own growth is really rep repressing where I meant to go from having this exchange. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So here we are. <laughs> it feels so clear. Thank you. I'm, I'm really appreciating this on a personal level. And I'm hoping that our listeners are um, able to see where this shows up in their lives. If there are some really challenging relationships, especially those familial ones or the ones that we can't get away from, there is a reason for them being here. And, and maybe the reason is to teach us the power of our own forgiveness, the power of our ability to um, bring to the surface what's going on and 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 deal with it in a in a conscious way so that then we really can shift our vibration and call in more of what we're wanting. You know, so much, so much we forget, we forget how powerful we are and we forget the power of our spirit. We really do. And it's really the most powerful part of us, but because it can seem so intangible and we could never describe, I don't know what my spirit is. I don't, I can feel it at times, but one of the ways that we do get to really have an experience with it is through what we're talking about is through and that's why being an empath highly sensitive intuitive is such a higher evolutionary track is because yes we can feel the frustration we can feel the negativity we can be overwhelmed with crowds i mean i have all of it i'm all of it and yet at the same time, when I got that awareness, oh, I need to forgive her, I immediately could feel the difference. I immediately could feel that separates me from this. And that's a gift to be able to feel. And, and that's one of the things that I feel like a passion towards with others is helping empathic, intuitive, highly sensitive people to realize that yes, in the third three dimensional world, there we are experiencing these downsides of these gifts. However, we're evolving, all of humanity is evolving into higher awareness and vibration, even if we're fighting it all the way. And these are the things our incorporating them, our awareness of our spirit, our utilizing these gifts, boundaries, forgiveness these things helps everybody. Really beautiful. Thank you. Um, Sherry, I'm curious if um, maybe you have like a, a tool or a practice that you can offer for people who aren't maybe mired in the way that we were just talking about that are um, maybe having an easier time getting through life and aren't having to work so hard and, and call on forgiveness and, and, and boundaries in that way. Do you have um, a tool that you might be able to offer just to raise our frequency, just to kind of shift us into a higher vibration to call in more of, of what we're wanting in our lives? You know, there's so many, so, so many ways to do it. There's so many ways to do it. And like you said, it really depends on where we're, where we are. If we're in a place where we're feeling overwhelmed or we're feeling powerless, or if we're in a place where everything seems to be moving really well and we're wanting to just lift even higher in those kinds of situations where we're wanting to lift a bit higher a bit higher you know frequency and i'm these are not 
earth shattering things, but they help, you know, they work. One is really um, listening to music, you know, and, and, you know, the funny thing is, is that um, there's been, you know, different studies about what kind of music raises our vibration, you know, what opens us. And yet, if you ask people, even people that are more kind of spiritually sophisticated, they will tell you all different kinds of music, you know, all different kinds. I mean, not even new age music, you know, rock or classical or anything. And so I would say what works for you, you know, what really works for you is the right way to raise your frequency, um, your vibration in that way. The natural world raises our vibration very, very easily. Um, being around the elements, the water, um, you know, even even sometimes a, a, a breeze, a gentle breeze can raise it. It, it. Part of it is when we're in the present time with that, you know, when we're able to use our senses our and open them up to just be in a place where we're noticing and able to take in the beauty of life, too. And sometimes it's really beauty too. It's, 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 you know, different, different, um, whether that's, you know, the beauty of a beautiful landscape or it's a beautiful painting or whatever that might be. Creativity raises it. Um, there isn't a short little meditation at some point today we can do that will help raise our frequency in a little different way too. If you want to do that now, we can do that now. Okay. All right. So we're all ready. Let's do it. Thank you. Okay. You know, it's not necessary to go into a, a deep meditation for this. Um, I would suggest maybe we could all kind of just take a deep breath, though, relax. Um, sometimes closing our eyes is helpful just to, because we're going to be listening within for this. So why don't we go ahead and just take a nice long, deep breath. And we're going to send the energy of the breath down through the body. And as we do that, we're going to be able to, through the exhale, to release any tension, any stress anywhere in the body. And then just going smoothly into another nice, long, deep inhale. Releasing, relaxing, sending the warm breath through the body and just letting go. Letting go of any stress, any tension of the day or the week. And just relaxing into this cleansing natural breath. Long, deep inhales and then relaxing exhales. As we breathe, I want you to bring to mind, see what comes into your awareness about an aspect of yourself, something about yourself that you've been critical about or maybe even felt ashamed of or have found yourself feeling, why do I keep doing that? What's, what's, what's wrong with me? Why do I keep making that mistake or falling into the same trap? Whatever it might be, there might be more than one thing that surfaces that comes to mind. That's perfectly normal. And just pick the one thing that seems the strongest, that seems the most wanting your attention right now. And it can be anything. It can be, as we just said, a thought, awareness, an activity. I'm just going to give you a few moments to just become clear about one aspect of yourself that seems to be a problematic to you. As you become aware of this aspect of yourself, just breathe into it, feel it, and then what we're going to do is I want you to draw your awareness through the body, starting at the top of your head, and feel in your body 
where this energy might be the strongest or where it's st stored. Maybe it's a feeling of guilt or shame or criticalness. Whatever that might be, just get a sense of where in your body the energy of this feeling may be stored. Now, it might move around. That's common. But just, you know, get a sense of where it might be the strongest at this time. And to continue to breathe and relax as you just allow this feeling that you've just identified to feel it in your physical energy body. And as you identify that, feel that in your body, I want you to imagine Imagine your heart, imagine opening your heart, or you can imagine a space above your head where white light comes in through the body, or white light and love through the heart, whatever feels more natural for you, or it could be both. Just imagine love, light, high vibration, moving through you to this place in your body where this feeling is. Now, there might be some resistance from this energy. This energy might not feel worthy of this love. It might even be afraid of this high vibration energy, this light. It may not feel worthy of this light. It may close up and pull away try to become smaller so it's not noticed. Just keep sending light and love. Just imagine this warmth of light, of love, just cradling, surrounding, and offering this part of you love, unconditional kindness and love, compassion. There's no need to suffer and to hold on to this. It's just moving into the light now. It's moving into this love. It's absorbing this light, absorbing this love. And becoming light, becoming within you a place of light, of love wherever it has been in your body, now becomes soft. There's movement, there's light, there's energy. And you can feel now this vibration within you rising, this frequency. Moving into a higher, higher awareness, a higher consciousness, and feeling that light all through you, mind, body, and spirit. And then just embrace this aspect of you. Love this aspect of you. Have compassion for all you've been through. And see now and feel now that it's a source of power, of positivity that's with you, of strength always working in your highest good. And then when you're ready, you can just gently come into the here and now, feeling your higher frequency energy flowing through you. Thank you, Sherry. That was beautiful. Yes. For people who are wanting to learn more from you, work with you, have you be their teacher? Can you just share briefly about um, 
either your your mentoring groups or 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 other ways that you support people that want to learn from you? Absolutely. Thank you for the question. Um, I am going to be starting mentoring groups, smaller groups that will meet online. And also if people can't do the online um, every time, they'll I'll be recording, um, they'll be recorded the session so people can do that when it's a uh, better time for them. Um, the groups are not going to be too large. So if you're interested, they're going to be mentoring. I'm going to have different groups. Some I'm going to have a mentoring group for grief for people that have lost loved ones um, to kind of work with loved ones on the other side and their own grief um, and spirituality. Um, and then I'll have one for intuition and um, kind of some of the things we're talking about. So there'll be different types. If people are interested, though, they can go to my website, um, sherrydillard.com, and um, send me an email and uh, let, just let me know of your interest. Super. And um, I know you've written many, many books. Can you share a little bit about this book that you're, I, I think that you said that you're um, finishing it, writing it, that um, is coming out next year. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yes, I have a book. Um, it's going to be the working title is The Empath's Transcendent Journey to Abundant Living. And some of what we've talked about today is in the book. I talk a lot about the, um, you know, basically the themes we talked about, obviously, in more detail. And then my other books are different, every, you know, most of them deal with intuition, um, development, spirituality, um, loved ones. And there's just a whole little bunch of them there. So you can find them Amazon, um, anywhere, bookstores, they're, they're there. Super. Thank you so much. Sherry, it's, it's so lovely to talk with you. Thank you for your um, your wisdom. For me personally, I had several really big aha um, inspirational, you know, shifts during our, our time together. And I'm curious if there's anything that felt really powerful for you that you want to remind the listeners of, or if there's anything that we didn't have a chance to talk about today that needs to come through you before we have to say goodbye. I guess the last thing I'd like to say is to be your authentic self and to the more that we are our authentic self, the stronger we are, the more powerful we are. And it's when we fear, pull away, and try to overly control and manage that we lose our power. When we remember that we have power, and there are tools, there's a lot of tools through books, um, programs like this. Um, classes. There's so much out there now that can help us with these particular kinds of um, sensitivities we have. And I really encourage people to follow that path because it is a path of ascension. Sherry, thank you so much. Thank you for your time and your wisdom and your just beautiful spirit. I'm really, really appreciating you. And thank you to all of the listeners who joined us for this session. I just loved working with you today. It was fabulous. I really appreciate it. Likewise, such a yes. joy. Thanks so much.